dirty boy. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Lux and Riot. waited weeks to see you. Now, some of you may be wondering why I'm still in the desert. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm channeling my inner chinchilla. No, really, what I was waiting for was this. Right, come this way. Good girl. I don't want her behind the thing. Come, right inside. You're a wild mustang. What are you doing? Literally at my trailer. I know a lot of you are itching for me to get on with the adventures and me too, to be honest. I do have travel plans coming up now and uh, we should be enjoying some trees relatively soon. Now for today's video, many of you voted and 53% voted for a video on the dumbest purchases I've made for the cargo trailer slash my camp life. Since my dumb purchases aren't overwhelmingly dramatic, I was kind of hoping more of you would vote for the video on ensuring a cargo trailer camper conversion like a tiny home. So thank you to the 31% of you that did. Uh, and I'll get on to the insurance video at another time. To be clear before we get started, what I consider dumb or by dictionary definition more aptly stupid, nah, ignorant, yes, I, let's go with ignorant by standard implication. What I consider ignorant purchases may not be ignorant or dumb to you. I consider the five things we're about to pick apart dumb purchases because they were either never used and therefore entirely pointless or I purchased them as a uninformed consumer where other choices would have been light years more better. -er -er. <clears throat> now, thankfully, I only have five things that I can look around and say to myself, wow, that was kind of dumb to purchase. Since I practice what I preach, which is essentially to start with almost nothing and buy what you need as you go, I don't have a lot that I regret purchasing. You can see if you were to go back and watch my trailer tour video, which is super cringy as it's the second video I ever made, um, and I should probably update it at some point, I've made a lot of advances to uh, a lot of the little components, like I got the solar, I got more batteries, I got a refrigerator, but I started things um, pretty simple and I've kept it pretty simple throughout my time on the road. But it means if you don't buy a lot, you can't regret a lot of what you buy. But I, again, have come up with five things that I can say were not smart purchases. <clears throat> anyway, let's look at those five things I bought for living in a cargo trailer and to ABC, always be camping, that in hindsight seem quite dumb or maybe, you know, a little ignorant. All right, the first purchase that I'd like to pick apart is probably gonna be the most controversial, and it's my Jackery. <laughs> now, I love power stations. They're convenient, they take the guesswork out of getting individual components, and are incredibly easy to use. But they are expensive for what you get, and they are not all created equal. Like so many newbies, I needed a simple solar solution for when I started out since I was on the road for over a year before I got a permanently mounted solar power system. But now that I spent more time educating myself, I realized that the Jackery's biggest advantage is in advertising. Don't take my word for it as some blonde living in a box. Listen to expert men like Will Prowse, Bob Wells, and Hobo Tech. The market is now saturated with power boxes that have way more life cycles, options, and power for less money with the same warranty and with better features. I, just like so many other people out there, succumbed to the many, 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 many sponsored Jackery videos out there when I was making my initial purchase decision. Two years ago, there also weren't as many well-known competitors, but in hindsight, I feel like I was just kind of lazy in my research and went with what I saw 
advertised a lot. I still love my Jackery and I use it every day. I still find it convenient, easy, and useful. I just know that I could have gotten more bang for my buck and so I feel that while portable power stations are a pretty smart purchase and the Jackery brand is good and I am by and large happy with it, if I knew then what I know now, I probably would have gone with a different brand that has the same options, same warranty, but with way more life cycles, um, with more bang for my buck. Ooh, I hope I don't get slack for that one. The next purchase that I think was a little dumb or maybe ignorant in hindsight is the Coleman Mach air conditioner with the heat strip that I had installed when I ordered this cargo trailer. I do acknowledge and agree that having an air conditioning unit with a heat strip may be useful to me in the future at some point, but for the last two years that I've been on the road, I have not plugged into shore power or a generator that would you know run it um, and I can't foresee me doing so so in hindsight I could have saved myself 200 plus dollars on having the AC unit installed when I ordered the cargo trailer and instead opted for something more useful to me in my off-grid living situation like a uh, uh, vent fan that could have been easily powered off of just even a little bit of solar where the air conditioning I would have to have so much solar to run it that it probably isn't in my near future reality I would have to plug in a shore power or a generator so in hindsight that thing has been it's like I have 200 plus dollars sitting on my roof for no reason the next thing that I initially bought as you would for any living situation, that uh, for cargo trailer, for camp life, is not maybe the smartest, is traditional dish sponges. Unless you have a water tank system that mimics, you know, like an at-home system, like maybe you have something that, um, like a 15 gallon tank and you're running like a regular sink and stuff like that. Um, Regular dish sponges just require way too much water to clean effectively and they end up stinking and then you have this wet sponge in a tiny space that you want to avoid moisture in anyway. Um, so what I recommend and have like literally fallen in love with, this is like the best, I think it was like $4. Um, it's an MSR. You can get it on Amazon. It has this scraper tool, so like when my when I'm cooking in cast iron and I burn something onto it or anything, you can scrape it off. And then this is like antibacterial um, scrubby, so you can scrub your dishes super well with it. Because um, you know traditional dish sponges just don't aren't they're just not a good fit in this life, I don't think, personally. Um, and then paper towels sometimes is not enough, especially when you burn things on a cast iron like I often do. Now, to give you an example of how this can work, I found um, what I think are jackrabbit hips. Because, you know, it wouldn't be a Lux and Riot video without some weird ass something or other. Um, so I found these like jackrabbit hips on a walk um, and I like them. I think, you know, they could either turn into a necklace if I get some leather um, or they fit onto my finger, not that finger, like a ring. Like you could almost think like Lady Gaga would wear something just maybe made out of not actual bone, but at any rate, but they have some like, you know, gook on them. So I've had them soaking in this cup of vinegar and water and I'm gonna take a minute and I'm going to use my MSR brush to scrub this where, you know, a traditional dish sponge would not be able to get this done. And you can kind of think of it like baked on food onto something. I hope this is going in the direction I want it to. Another advantage of the MSR dish sponge is that it doesn't take up any space. You can see it really does a good job scrubbing off the debris that's been stuck to these hip bones. Now these have been sun bleached, so I'm not too worried about bacteria or anything. Most of what's on here is just dirt. These are too old to still have meat on them. 
This is the best thing. Even if I lived in a house, I feel like I would use this instead of any other dish cleaner. I mean, I've, I've never, maybe it's, maybe it's a tell of my age, but I've never been so excited over a dish product before. I have never had such ease cleaning dishes, even, even stuff that are burnt or baked on. It's like the most amazing thing. So I highly recommend you do not buy traditional dish sponges and you get this MSR thingy-mabob off Amazon to do all your dish cleaning. All right. All right. <clears throat> the fourth purchase that I would say was not my brightest was the Master Lock Coupler Lock. And I say that for a couple reasons. First off is because that bloody thing, even in the reviews, people were saying you can knock it off with a hammer and apparently Master Lock has the reputation for not having unique keys. So someone went around and they had a bunch of Master Lock keys they could easily take off your coupler. Um, thirdly, one of the reasons that I ordered the design of the trailer that I did is because for security purposes, this trailer's entire coupler removes. And so I didn't really need a coupler lock in the first place. I can just remove my entire coupler, but I bought it because I thought, I don't want to remove my coupler every single time. But then when I got the damn thing, it, the lock was all janky and, um, and then when it did get stuck, I just knocked it off with a hammer. So in hindsight, I would have just bought a better product. And so I think coupler locks are smart. I think they're important for trailer security unless you can remove your entire coupler, but I would buy a way better quality product um, like my locking pins or you know my hitch pins are locking and they're from a company called Amplock who also makes a coupler lock and it just seems like a way better quality product and I would I would recommend looking into those um, if you're going to get a coupler lock and don't waste your money on the on the master lock one that was stupid all right for number five I have a tie between two things um, a 600 watt inverter that I panic bought and a hand pump sink apparatus for the sink that I don't actually have. So when I was building out the cargo trailer, I had the idea that I would eventually cut a hole in my countertop and inlay like a, a bowl and make a sink. And it just wasn't practical for my needs. I'm just as happy with the five gallon container with the pump, which acts just like the hand pump for the sink. So it was really stupid for me to order the hand pump uh, sink before I had any intention, desire, or actual plan to inlay a sink into the cargo trailer. It, this is one of those moments where I wish that I had followed my own advice and waited until I actually knew what I was doing or what I actually needed before I made a purchase. Now, it wasn't like, you know, a super extreme purchase, but you can nickel and dime your way into hell. You know what I mean? So like a bunch of small, stupid, needless purchases add up to a few tanks of gas that I can go explore with. So... <laughs> You know, that, that's where like, you know, some of my purchases aren't extreme big purchases dollar wise, but you add them up and you're like, you know, it's, it adds up, it adds up to dumb. So as to the inverter, I panic bought that back when I got the fridge and realized that um, the 12 volt sucked and I was going to have to use the 110. And then I ended up listening to many of you good viewers and hardwiring the refrigerator, which solved the problem. And I, you know, didn't need the inverter at all. So then I was walking around with this $100, 600 watt inverter, which is way bigger than I need to charge my laptop and camera equipment, which is the only thing I, I use an inverter for. Um, and so, and then you're, you're losing, you know, it's like a parasite to your power, these bigger inverters, cause I don't need all that. So I ended up giving it to someone in exchange for them, um, putting on nicer wires for me. So I upgraded my wires in exchange for um, that 600 watt inverter. So I hope she's happy with that and I'm certainly happy with uh, nicer 
nicer ends on my wires. So thanks, Maggie. So I realize that none of my dumb purchases are that extreme. It's not like I regret getting the double axle. I certainly don't. It gives me a lot more stability, especially when I'm going down certain roads. Um, I know that I can carry an absurd amount of weight if I ever wanted to. And it gives me peace of mind that if one of my tires went out, I still have three others um, that, that I could limp away on. So I don't regret like the double axle. I don't regret, um, you know, getting an off-road trailer. I don't regret any of that. But as a bonus, I, I will give you the one thing that I would change on the cargo trailer because I'm happy with all of it. I wouldn't change my cargo trailer build. I built it for weight distribution. I have peace of mind towing. Um, but there is one thing that I would change and it's back here. All right, if there's one thing that I would have changed in this entire cargo trailer living situation, it's this drop down door. I like never use it, almost never. I feel like I would keep these open and put a screen in if I went with the barn doors. The reason I don't do the drop down door a lot is because even when you brush it off after having it down, um, there's always going to be a little grit, a little extra sand, a little extra dirt that when you go and you push this door back up, it is going to fall directly down onto my bed. And so if I had barn doors, I could easily open those, have a screen and, you know, walk in and out, have another area for ventilation. And, you know, I might use the drop down a little bit more maybe in the national forest, but you know, I'm in the desert all winter. And so I feel like um, I would have done barn doors, but that's really the only change that I would have made. I wish that I had given that more thought before I ordered it. I do have peace in my head that at some point, if I so desired, I could probably pay and get barn doors if I so wanted, and maybe one day I will. But for now, it's not worth the cost to me. I just kick myself every so often over it. So I know it's not a lot and it's not very extreme, but those are the purchases that in hindsight, I look back and go, God, that was kind of dumb. That was kind of ignorant. And maybe it can prevent you from making some of the same purchases. Cause even if they're small, you know, you nickel and dime your way into poverty <laughs> or prosperity. You can nickel and dime your way into prosperity too, by saving, you know, a little bit here, saving a little bit there works both ways. So have you made any dumb purchases for your camping life? If so, leave it in the comments below. That way everyone benefits. Um, and you know, maybe you think that something that I think is stupid of me to do, um, you think is a good idea for you. And that's perfectly fine and normal. Everyone's very, very different. Now in an upcoming video, I will talk about the trailer insurance and how I um, insure this thing like a tiny home. And um, I appreciate each and all of you for watching our silly videos. We just hope to make someone's life maybe a little brighter, maybe a little better. Um, sharing is caring. And um, we really appreciate you watching our little videos. Say thank you. So to finish this off, um, I will ask that if you liked this video, um, please give it a thumbs up. And to thank you, thank you, here is more of the horse content that we have been sticking around this area to capture. Those horses finally came up from the canyon. Um, and now we should be able to mosey on. <laughs> you gotta wait for wildlife sometimes. One of my favorite things about the desert southwest is finding and observing the wild mustangs.
have any food. You're very handsome. Yeah, I know. You're being very polite. If I can't feed you, that's not the right thing to do. I would like to. You know, you got yourself dirty. You're rolling in the dirt. You need to be brushed. All right, I'm gonna go finish my coffee, is that okay? I appreciate you coming to say hello to me. I've waited weeks to see you. I really do appreciate you coming out to say hi. Those are your friends, right? Okay, see ya.